So now this video is just going to be really a quick video and we are looking with the oscilloscope. We got the uh, red alligator clip there, the black one there, they're clipped to jumpers. So there's the negative rail in relationship to our zero volt reference point right there. We have the red alligator clip and that comes to the output of this integrated circuit. So the bottom pin right there. And uh, the input is this green wire right there. And there you can see the output is high right now. It's about 5 volts. If I pluck the LED, it does go up to 5 volts. So we got the LED as a visual. Long lead towards the output, short lead towards ground, of course. Now, of course, since it's an inverter or a NOT gate, if I go to the uh, other extreme, to the positive rail, we're given a high signal, we have a low output. And you can see that on here pretty good. And again, if I remove the LED, it goes closer to the rail. So the uh, I'm guessing the output is uh, has a little more impedance resistance than uh, it, it could have, you know. Uh, that's why I'm guessing it's not getting all the way to the negative rail with the load. But in any case, the main thing is that Sometimes we see both LEDs on. So you can see here it's rapidly going up and down, probably about 60 times a second, I'm guessing. This is kind of like an antenna. So if I yank the uh, jumper out and I'm yanking it out of the uh, second pin up right now, there you can see now it leveled off. And let's see if, uh, yeah. I can give it uh, stray signals there. So that's why floating pins are a problem. They pick up signals like that. And uh, so now we saw that problem and that is pretty common for uh, basically all digital circuits. So let's get the signal back. And uh, so there we go. We're towards the uh, positive rail and so you can see that we have a it's actually a low output. This is the negative rail going to the short lead of the LED. Long lead goes to the positive rail right there. And uh, we'll jump back again and it goes up. So now, the more interesting thing. This is not a Schmidt trigger output. Schmidt trigger outputs jump to one of those two settings right there. And you'll notice sometimes the uh, voltage kind of went part way and then came back or whatnot when it was going erratic. So what we're going to do now is actually set this about halfway. And now we got a more interesting line right there. So there you can see the voltage. So it's erratically bouncing up and down just a little bit at the halfway point. And what we can do is change that to uh, 0.5. We can even look at it uh, that much. So that's 0.2 volts per square and let's uh, go with the seconds per division and slow it down we'll get a little more detail and we're really not getting uh, detail it just looks like it's erratic so just bouncing around back and forth so I don't think we'll get much more interesting information than we got right there but uh, that's without the Schmidt trigger so you won't get that with the Schmidt trigger. It goes to one extreme or the other. If you're about halfway, there's an area called hysteresis where whatever the output is, about halfway, it's going to stay there and you have to go to a uh, threshold. So if it's a high input, then you have to go closer to the lower threshold than halfway and then it will give a low input and a high output in this case and then you got to work your way up more than halfway to get a high input for a low output there's a threshold there's an area in the middle where it stays where uh, it was before whereas with this one you get somewhere about halfway it just goes a little erratic and it's got about half the uh, voltage there that it is staying within so I didn't expect to see exactly that I actually figured more of a straight line so I find that interesting but uh, in any case that's it 
for this video. Just thought I would look at that because we had been seeing that the two LEDs were on. And also, another thing that we can do is that uh, we can just pluck the two resistors and you see it's actually all to do with the output. So we did have a path from uh, that orange jumper through the LED, through the resistor, and then through the resistor through that LED. If we removed the chip, current would have gone through them, but it would have been a steady line again because the resistance and everything would have been steady. So we knew that wasn't the problem. It was actually what was being output was about half of the power supply voltage. So check out one of these other videos and uh, click the subscribe button. And uh, if you haven't, make sure you click the bell so you get notifications. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.